I mean, the, the, right. there's, I mean, the issue, come down that's with the me, that's Come the down. Well, that's the answer. Come down and tell them. And that, that's My the... glass members are over the moon. You've had Pilkington's yeah. Yeah. Glass close in Geelong. The glass industry is in a crisis. It's a major employer in Victoria. Okay, well, let's just get a confirmation from the Treasurer. Well, if, if what you're saying is right, the Treasurer will know. Is it true or Well, not? there's half a dozen producers around the country and a very substantial proportion will be produced here. How there's many, no doubt about it. How many that. of them? When you say very substantial well, I can't, proportion, I can't it's like one myself. of those political phrases. No, it's not. <laughs> it yeah. might well, mean 50%. Well, there are, there are six producers in Australia. This program is taking off and it starts on the 1st of July. They are gearing up their production. The producers have been to Canberra, they've been meeting with our industry department and they're getting going. And I think a substantial proportion <laughs> yeah. will be produced in Australia. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I know great people words. have been re-employed well, in the glass words. industry that yeah. were laid off in the last couple of years. And I know them. Well, Joe, if you had your way, nothing would be done. As for small business, and this, this is a very, very important point, you can have all the tax concessions you want for small business. But if small business hasn't got customers, and if small business can't borrow money from banks, then small business isn't going to be able to afford to buy new equipment. And now that the government is going into the debt markets on a scale that we haven't seen before, borrowing $200 billion, every dollar the government borrows on, is a dollar that is not available to go to small business to buy those products. Joe, right. just admit to everybody here, you will be borrowing as much as we're going to borrow. You've admitted to it on another program, <laughs> just admit it here. I'm sorry, that's absolutely well, rubbish. Well, you will be, Joe. Because Firstly, you guys have spent $66 billion no, in new commitments since the budget last year. You are on a spendathon of massive scale. We do not agree with the $42 billion. We think it is too much money. It is badly targeted. 25, at least $25 billion less we at will least. spend as a starting point because we do not want to mortgage our children. Well, 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 well Joe, Joe, Joe has just said he's going to borrow $180 billion. No, I have not. Yes, you I have, have not. Joe. I'm sorry. You have do not verbal me. Do you not have just said me. that. Uh, you're very good at that, Wayne. It's $180 billion, dollars, Joe. Uh, well, that's completely wrong. And the second thing is, uh, all of those initiatives that you had last year actually took your spending initiatives, according to your own finance minister, took the budget near the deficit. Before, before there'd be any, any review of revenue, your own finance minister said, because of spending initiatives from your government, Joe, between you the budget and December, you actually had taken the budget towards a deficit. OK, quick response, then we're going to change subject. There have been write-downs in revenues of $115 billion since the last budget, which have got nothing to do with government spending at all but they've got a lot to do with the global recession and the busting of the mining boom. That's the truth. And the Liberals, if they were in government at the moment, would be borrowing for that. They've also said they'll have a stimulus package and they'll be borrowing for that. Well, and well, the difference, Joe's just admitted, is around $20 billion. No, it isn't. Maybe. I did not but say we, that. we don't have a cost because of program well, from Joe. Can I tell you, there is a whole lot of initiatives, a whole lot of initiatives that you haven't even announced yet, which I expect we will not agree with, because you guys don't know how to save, you know how to spend. Joe, you should tell everybody here. You should tell everybody here what government programs you will cut or what taxes you will raise, well, so you I'll, don't I'll have to. I'll borrow. give you a starting point. For example, uh, before the last election, hand on heart, the Labor Party said they would cut four hundred million dollars of consultancies. It emerges this week that they've actually spent five hundred million dollars of consultancies. <laughs> Okay, Five hundred million, a record that, level on consultants. That's been denied in some quarters of the Labor Party. It, do you, it, would it, you deny it, it? most certainly has. Absolutely, I do deny it. Yeah. How much have you spent? Then? <laughs> There's a substantial amount that's spent on consultants. <laughs> that's, that's, but it is not. It is not the amount that Joe is saying. But is it hundreds of millions? Uh, yeah, well, probably would be in that vein. Yeah, <laughs> just like Joe. <laughs> We've saved a ton of ads, though. So. Just right. like Joe. But we, we did cut out ads. all these advertising. They're, spending, they're, okay. they're, they're buying ads to tell people how to spend money. I mean, all right. <laughs> OK. You're watching Q&A, the very much live and interactive forum where you get to ask the questions. You can be part of the audience in our Sydney studios by registering at abc.net.au slash Q&A. abc.net.au slash Q&A. Our next question is from Justin Portelli. Given the tough economic times, is the government considering to delay the introduction of the proposed carbon emissions trading scheme? Uh, no, Justin, we're not going to delay the legislation that will be brought into the parliament. I think it will be in a couple of months' time, uh, around May. We think this is very, very important to secure Australia's long-term future, to make a start. We've been criticised over our targets. We don't make any apologies for a slower start because of the global recession, but we are committed 
uh, to the proposals that we put forward at the end of last year because we are very serious about tackling dangerous climate okay, change. Okay, a follow-up question. Why have you <coughs> shut down your uh, Economic Parliamentary Standing Committee inquiry into this very thing, the emissions trading scheme, if it was good enough to well, set it up to have an inquiry yeah, well, into it, 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 why would you shut it down before it reports? Because it wasn't set up to inquire into the CPRS, it was set up to look at the broader issues of energy efficiency, but Joe and his mates decided they'd make it a political issue to question the CPRS, oh. so we shut it down. <laughs> you are kidding, we buddy. Yeah. You are seriously kidding. Last week, let's get the facts on the table. Last week, you wrote to the committee, which is a Labor-dominated committee, asking it to investigate whether an emissions trading scheme was the best way to reduce carbon No, we didn't, we didn't write to the It was by your job. hand. Well, it was your it, hand. It certainly right? was by my and hand. And that letter has been released. <laughs> now, <laughs> 6 o'clock today, 6 o'clock today, you asked the committee not to proceed with the investigation. And it was your committee with your recommendation and now you're withdrawing it. I mean, you don't know whether you're Wayne or Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why did you... Shut it down. What was the what was the what was the reason when if, if it is a Labor dominated committee, you can control the outcome? We certainly can, but what had arisen in the public debate was this notion we weren't proceeding. Uh, with the recommendations of the white paper and all the proposals we put out at the end of last year. That was never the intention of the committee to be a substitute for any of those processes. Ah, so this gets to the number of the question, in fact. Sure, because, because, because we are the, proceeding. The, the debate yeah. was uh, essentially mm. suggesting that uh, this committee was a way of you mm. delaying... Mm. Exactly, and we're, not and we're not doing that, and we never were. So that's why you shut it down, yeah. to prove that. Absolutely. OK, Christine Mill. Yes, well, I, I think it's... Um, clear that the government set up the committee in order to try and neutralise the criticism that would be coming from the Senate inquiry that the Greens are setting up into the whole issue of the adequacy of the target. We want to hear from Australia's scientists because we're confident that they will come and reaffirm what we all know, and that is that climate change is getting worse and that the cost of uh, not acting is going to be far greater than whatever, uh, in fact, minor costs of addressing climate change now. So I think they went into this thinking that they could control the outcome of the committee, they could line up a whole lot of people to come in and say the government system's great, and then, of course, it all blew up in the uh, government's face because it went awry badly and so it's been shut down. But the people of Australia can be confident that the Senate inquiry that uh, we'll be setting up, and hopefully with your support, Joe, um, we, will, we will see a comprehensive... <laughs> Was, was there more, ever more <laughs> salient a demonstration of the vagaries of politics? <laughs> Within vagaries. 20 minutes, you go from attacking the Greens to putting your arm around them. It's a funny, <laughs> it's a funny Charles, kind of love. Charles, it's a funny kind of love. Charles. It certainly is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I want to hear, now I want to hear uh, from Kate Cannell on this, on this question as to whether you believe the emissions trading scheme should go ahead on schedule? Look, it certainly shouldn't go ahead in its current form. Why would we put something on the table in Australia right now that will mean um, manufacturers in Australia will be disadvantaged quite significantly? Because remember, under what's on the table at the moment, imported goods aren't affected. Only goods manufactured in Australia. So. If we were manufacturing a can of tomatoes in Australia in the food industry, that will end up costing more because of the costs of electricity and so on. We'll end up with the carbon pollution reduction scheme costs on it. A can of tomatoes imported from South America, from Asia, is not affected. So Australian jobs will be affected. No doubt we've got to address no doubt we've got to address greenhouse in the world, but why Australia would go it alone when our nearest trading partners aren't going down that okay. part at all? I'm going to interrupt you there because we have another question. It's from the, from the middle. It's from Garonwi Price. 